and together with David, I was super excited to present a project which we've done together in partnership with Cento Una Per Cento. Uh, so quickly before we talk about our challenge, a quick note of our sponsor. Cento Una Per Cento is the first Italian AAA uh, games developer and an animation studio. Besides games, they also create bespoke animations and custom virtualized environments, uh, either a B2B or B2C channel. Um, their games are great. Go check them out. So quick note on the context of this challenge. As you can imagine, the value, the market cap of global video games market has been exponentially increasing. Uh, as you can see from the graph on the left, these are only the 2020 are only the uh, expectations or the projections, which are actually much, much higher due to the coronavirus pandemic, which has had an immediate and uh, huge boost on the gaming development. Uh, so the market is huge and con constantly growing. But on the other side, you can also see that um, the cost of creating video games and animation in general is also exponentially increasing. I'd like to point out in the attention that uh, the y-axis is exponential, or logarithmic, and not linear. So uh, two of these bars is essentially a hundredfold increase in production cost of a single game. So we see this as a huge opportunity. And this is the context during which Cento um, Cento reached out to us to try to fix. So one particular point in here that we can try to tackle is um, the pipeline of animating characters. So in very quick, uh, very quick note, how the animation pipeline looks like uh, from a video game house is that you start with a script, then you have to hire an actor to reenact the script that then, it then gets automatically converted into a 3D facial animation of a character, which then has to be manually fixed by an animator and needs to be corrected for some small errors. And then at the end, um, such animation is then vo voiced over by a professional voiceover actor. And as you can imagine, this solution is expensive and time consuming. You need multiple people integrating together. And another problem of this is that scripts now suddenly become static objects that cannot be very easily changed since every change to the script requires this pipeline to be moved from the beginning to the end again. So you need to rehire the actor, redo the animation. And this is, of course, a big problem. So where we come in is right in the middle of this pipeline with our collaboration. We try to create a machine learning model that automatically takes a script and turns it into a realistic looking animation. So how do we do this? So let's respecify this problem a little bit in a little bit more detail. Given a particular speech, given a particular script in a particular tone and emotion, we need to reconstruct an un, uh, believable looking animation. The way we do this is we first convert the script to a piece of audio using a text to speech. And then we create a custom bespoke model that converts speech to realistic looking animation. So here's our model architecture. Um, so from the first challenge, you're already accustomed to what Mel spectrograms look like. It's essentially a visual representation of our audio. Uh, and as you can see on the X axis, you can see time. And on the Y axis, you can see the frequency activations of that particular sound. We use this as an input into our bespoke machine learning model. For those of you who are interested, it's uh, some combination of a convolutional neural network with batch normalization and a dense layer at the end of it, which in the end, comes out looking as a series of parameter activations, which then control our animation, uh, well, our facial animation of our model. So in this particular uh, case, you can see only a very small sample of these parameters. There's actually 140 of them. However, for readability, you can only see a sample of 10 uh, changing over time. So here are our results so far. When is Lina's birthday? Not sure. In a couple of days, she'd been saving for two tickets. She managed to get hold of your phone and address. That's how I had your number. 
Now, we're extremely uh, excited about these results. We already believe that uh, they look very realistic and can definitely have commercialization potential. Uh, we, of course, do believe that there is um, more work to be done. However, the results we already have are very, very promising. Um, quick note on the literature. As I said before, the, our, our model was bespoke uh, because of the particular business requirements of first starting with text and then converting it into 3D parameters of a, um, of a particular animation character. We believe that the bespoke solution would suit us best. However, we did, of course, base ourselves on literature and we used state-of-the-art um, papers to guide our um, architecture design. A quick note on the workflow, because I believe it's a, it's besides an interesting machine learning challenge, I also believe it's a very, very interesting engineering challenge. So I'd love, I'd love to take a minute to quickly talk about this. We have to start with a 3D animation software, such as Maya. Uh, the first step we need to do is to actually extract the animations from the file. So we have custom scripts to extract our animations from, uh, from the custom 3D model, turn it into a JSON format. Then we do, um, alongside taking with the auto, uh, we do custom pre-processing using a stack of different uh, tools and techniques to turn it into a uh, final usable audio format, which gets stored as our database in HDF file, um, which we then use as input to our custom bespoke model. We use TensorFlow and Keras to train that model. After we have a trained model, we can then feed any audio sample, or as a matter of fact, we can feed any text sample using a text-to-speech model beforehand and feed it into our model to produce reliable uh, looking animations, which of course, at the end, we need to feed back directly into the 3D rendering software to view the results, which you saw a couple of slides before. So that's it. Um, I'm Adrian, and together with Davida, we've been working on this project. It's been very exciting. Uh, so thank you for Cento and for Cento for providing us with this opportunity. I'd also like to speak a few words about our mentor, Timo Bolkart, whose guidance uh, has been instrumental in completing this project. So thank you so much, Timo. And with that, I'd like to thank you for listening. Thank you, Adrian. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm João. I'm from Pi School, and I coach the team on this project. And I would like to say a few words about it. So, essentially, this actually is a second iteration of a project that started in the previous session of the School of AI. And in this session, the the the, the two fellows, David and Adrian, they set out to improve the previously existing solution, which unfortunately had some expressivity and lip sync issues. Um, this uh, was um, a very difficult uh, challenge since uh, the data that uh, Adrian and David had to work with uh, was quite complex and it was difficult to learn how to manipulate and extract all the necessary information from it. And in addition, the Adrian and David also had to work with the advanced 3D development software, which is not very easy to, to use and has a, a difficult uh, learning curve. Um, one thing I actually uh, found, find worthy of note that happened during this project that is something that ideally should happen in every project was the fact that uh, Adrian and Davide managed to help Cento no Percento with the data generation process. And they did this by creating a script which reduced the number of iterations between Pi School and Cento no Percento during this uh, data generation uh, phase. Um, in the end, actually, David and Adrian managed, as, you, as you've seen from their presentation, to create a very convincing solution, a very com, uh, convincing proof of concept, which I believe marked a landmark on a commercially viable product. So even though that this is not ready directly for production and to be used uh, straight away uh, commercially, I think this was really a stepping stone on, on, that, uh, on that direction. And uh, I, I'm quite happy about the results that were obtained. So thank you for listening and uh, over to you, Maite. 
Thank you, Joao. And wow, congratulations to all the fellows on achieving such incredible results with their projects.